Welcome to C Programming Tutorials. This is a production of YouTube channel Learnorama and the Facebook page Awesome C Programming Tutorials in High Def. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would suggest that you please do so, uh, so that you can be notified of any new tutorials that I post as soon as I post them. And uh, I would also recommend and appreciate if you become the fan of the Facebook page Awesome C Programming Tutorials in High Def. Um, in today's tutorial we are going to learn about two dimensional arrays um, we have been using one dimensional arrays or the regular arrays and we call them one dimensional arrays and we know uh, how to declare them how to access those elements but in today's tutorial we are going to learn about two dimensional arrays how to create them how to access the individual elements and how they are uh, you know laid out in the memory and stuff so let's get started so we know that you know for one dimensional array or the regular arrays that we have been using what do we do we declare them something like this and the way we visualize them is something like this uh, like having a sequence of uh, elements starting from zero to all the way to one less than the total number of elements here and the name of the array a is a and that represents an address itself okay now just like this if you extend it if you extend this concept to two dimensions this is just one dimension it's like having only one length right or having only one row if you will if you actually have multiple rows like suppose this is a row and you have one more row and then one more row and each row has multiple elements which would basically end up in creating columns here right so something like this so this actually creates a two-dimensional array so and this is how we visualize any two-dimensional array to look like it has you can say it has rows row 0 1 and 2 and each row is like an array itself a one-dimensional array itself and you or you could say that there are columns here right 0 1 2 3 4 in this particular example in this particular two-dimensional array we have three rows and five columns and the indices for rows and columns run from 0 to 1 less than the total number of rows for, for row and uh, uh, for rows and for columns it runs from 0 to uh, 1 less than total number of columns so an array uh, like this say its name is um, uh, I don't know my 2d let's say its name is my 2d so my 2d array its name is uh, it's it's it will be declared as int or whatever type that you want to declare it for you know my 2d and first you have to specify the total number of rows which is 3 and then one more pair of square brackets specify the total number of um, columns something like this okay and this will declare this my 2d array in uh, and we will visualize it uh, like this now the memory itself is uh, is actually um, is a sequence of bytes okay there are no dimensions to it kind of or there is only one dimension to it so how do does compiler actually represent it in the memory this is what it does it takes the first row and it stores that first so five elements in that row from here to here this represents the row number zero okay the name my 2d is actually the address of the first location okay and then the second row comes into picture or get stored the five elements of the second row that's row number one and then the third row row three okay so this is how a compiler actually ends up in in storing or uh, the this two-dimensional array into one dimensional uh, memory kind of so uh, that's that's outside the point we will we will know why this is important to know when we will start doing pointers to to two dimensional arrays uh, but for now this is the this is essentially what it is now how to access the individual elements of two dimensional array how did we access individual elements of one dimensional array for example this one we know 
if you have to access this one you have to use the subscript 2 which is the element number 2 here uh, for this array a right so this is how you access so if you make it equal to 10 this actually stores 10 right here okay and if you um, make this one equal to 5 this will oops this will actually store 5 here similarly if you have to store 6 here this is how you do it a of first the row number 1 and then the column number 2 these two together uniquely identify one of the elements or one of the integers in this uh, uh, one of the elements in this array you know it doesn't have to be integer array it could be any any array any type okay but all of those types just like in one dimensional array all those elements have to be the same type okay and if I make it equal to 6 it will go and boom store 6 right here and if I want to make this guy uh, 13 what I have to do is I have to write row number and then the column number and then make it equal to 13 and so on so this is how this is what two-dimensional arrays look like and this is how you represent them so let's let's uh, write a little piece of code here so let's declare this my 2d having I don't know three rows and four columns and how do you access the individual elements okay if you have to access the entire array for example for one dimensional array you needed one index variable to go through the entire um, this whole um, array in 2d arrays you need actually two indices one for row and one for column so you declare let's see int row comma column okay and then you run four loops because rows actually go from 0 to 2 and then columns go from 0 to 4 so we have to uh, we have to run you know uh, two dimension two 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 four loops so for row is equal to 0 row is less than how many elements are there uh, how many rows do we have three so less than three in other words the rows would be the value of row would be 0 1 and 2 less than 3 not equal to 3 there is so row will never be 3 okay so row plus plus and then you have another loop for every row for every row you have to access for every row you have to access each column 0 1 2 3 4 and then for row 1 we have to access 0 1 2 3 4 for row 2 you have to access 0 1 2 3 4 so we basically run another loop inside that loop which makes changes column from 0 to all the way to whatever the maximum number of columns is minus 1 or 1 less than that so less than 4 so it will go from 0 1 2 3 it will never be 4 so that's how the four columns would be accessed in column plus plus now in this this array is a little different from this picture uh, drawn because in this picture there are five columns but to keep the thing simple I'm doing this and then say I don't know this way so if, if you access the element row column you actually will be able to access the entire row uh, entire array okay now you could do whatever you want to do you want to print the value values of these these elements you could do that if you want to make uh, assign some value to those those elements say zero so if you want to initialize all of them to zero you could do it this way okay even though it is easier to do it actually this way and this will basically make the entire array zero but suppose if you want to really uh, let me stop here because we are running out of time and we'll continue this tutorial in the next video so don't forget to watch it thank you so much